What's going on, y'all? So today we're going to do a varnishing of a large painting. I just wanted to show y'all real quick a sneak peek of what I've been working on over the weekend and the past few days. Um, I haven't posted this on Facebook yet. Um, just uh, felt like sharing it real quick. Um, it was just uh, one of my nocturne scenes. I used a black canvas. Most of it's dry, but all these yellow spots and whites, those are not. I worked in um, most of these in nice green tones. It's kind of hard to see it until I post it later. Um, feel free to tune in later after this. I'm just going to be varnishing one of my bigger pieces, which is, um, goodness, I'm knocking everything over. I'm going to be varnishing one of my bigger pieces, which was a commission about a month or a few weeks back, maybe a month ago. So. Without further ado, I'm going to take this one down and we're going to varnish. This is for all y'all who have been asking me um, how you varnish paintings. And I've already given a video on this, but I figured um, I would give a new perspective because I've actually learned a few of things about varnishing that I did not share within the last few sessions. And this painting I'm going to have to send here in about a month. so. We're gonna do a really, really big piece. It's a 24 by 36. And it's the biggest piece I've ever varnished or will have ever varnished because I've, I've just done small pieces. So without further ado, let's get it. Y'all so, probably recognize this piece. I'm gonna go ahead and scoot this guy up real quick. making sure it's nice and clamped. So what I'm going to be using right now is a nice soft bristle brush. This is synthetic and it's very, very soft. If you can see it, it almost looks like fur. It's very, very flexible and it's very soft. It's very gentle on, on your canvases as well. Make sure your canvas is completely dry because you don't want this thing accidentally soaking through the painting. Um, in this case, you know, this is the only part that's remotely questionable is the moon, but you know, we can actually work around it and do it regardless. I've got enough varnish in here to where we can work with it. And you want to use as little as possible on your brush. So when you go in and dip into it, like, like so, it's kind of hard to see, but when you go dip into it, you just kind of want to wipe away some of the excess and then shake it out just a little bit if you can. If you can't, that's all right. And then what you're going to do next, you're just going to start from working your way from top to bottom in a fashion just like this. And if you see any little stray hair, just pick it up as gently as possible and toss it. And then um, if you find that you've got some hairs on here anywhere, just kind of take your hand or a rag. I usually use a rag, but don't have one on hand. So I'm just going to be using my hand and just wipe it off. Get all those dust bunnies, all those little, little hairs that like to sink and fly in somehow. Wipe them off. And then just take that real big wide brimmed. This is about a one and a half inch. I would actually recommend getting a bigger one, like maybe a two inch, if they make them. If they don't, that is quite all right. The one and a half inch works well. And the objective is to put a protective coat on it. And you want it in without overlapping. 
because when you overlap, what I found is that it kind of leaves almost a streak down the middle, and it's very annoying to get over to fix it. So just like so, wide brim all the way down, nice and slow, so that you can really get that coat on. And you don't want to have too much on there because you don't want it dripping because that would be kind of a hassle. You'd have to actually go back over it. And it, I can kind of see a little cracks and divots in between my brush strokes. So I'm going to go back and kind of overlap it, not much, but just slightly, only to fix the cracks. But just enough, just gently enough to where you can't really see that there's an overlapping. And I'm just going to go work my way back up, do the same thing. That's really all there is to it. And then if you see little cracks like I've got right here, just kind of take the take the sides of your brush and just do away with that, and then go reload when when and where you have to. In my case, I'm going to have to do it right now. And what this accomplishes is it protects, it actually protects your painting, the painting itself. Let me get these hairs out. It protects the painting itself. And um, it also makes the painting look shiny, like it's brand spanking new, like it's fresh off the easel. You just painted it type of look. you got to be careful with with these synthetic bristles is them falling out because they're super fine and super soft and they'll pop out really easily so when you see them kind of getting longer on your brush when you're pulling it down you know just go ahead and take initiative and pluck it out because it's kind of hard to you know pick it up after pick it up afterwards Again, we're just wiping this thing down just enough to where it won't be dripping the entire way. There we go. And you take it nice and slow, especially on the thick areas, so it can get all in between these little crevices that the thick paint creates. And then we've got another one of them bristles, just kind of come at an angle, the opposite of where the the bristles are when they're falling off and then go right back up. Super easy, right? Anyone can do this. You don't even have to be an artist for this. All you have to do is be able to see the little cracks in between where you've got a little varnish missing and that's it. Then just gradually maintain all those bristles that are kind of getting lost on the canvas. There. And take it nice and slow on the way up. Maintain it. Just like that. Anywhere you see little cracks, just go right back over it. Like right here. One thing I like to do is I like to get really close to the canvas just because sometimes you can't see everything. Like, for 
for instance, I missed a spot right here. See? So these bottom sides are kind of a kind of a little bit more difficult to get, just because when you're coming down, just you've got your um, your easel getting in the way. Usually, I would just be doing this in my lap, but this is too big, so I had to use my easel. So whenever you've got your easel getting in the way, that's a simple fix. Just pull it sideways, and then you can have the same concept. Or you can start from the bottom and work up. That way, you can. You know, touch the tip and the cam, or tip of the um, the canvas, and pull it up. And you can work in zigzags like this if you want, but I highly recommend just taking it real flat like this and working over. The entire thing in a line. Now, the last time I did a, a little varnishing piece. I was using a much smaller brush. I'm going to try to find you all that brush real quick if I can. Actually, you know what? I don't have that brush anymore. I don't think so. Nope, here it is. There we go. I was using this one. It's pretty much the same thing as this brush, just a lot smaller. It's more precise. So if you're doing a smaller painting and you don't want it to get everywhere, use this one. But this one saves you a lot of time, and time is kind of crucial and time is money. I wish I had a lot more time to do things and paint and stuff and meet people. Time is a very valuable currency. Do I varnish all of my paintings? No. Um, if someone buys a painting that I just finished, I will not varnish it. Um, if they send it back to me, I will varnish it. But most of my paintings, I'll varnish it if it dries within like a I think it's about a three month time frame or maybe two months. It just depends on how thick or how thin I paint it. This one I've been letting dry for a while. So I'm going to be painting this or varnishing this one. It's been drying for probably about four months or three months. Actually, no, it's about two months. So it's the only part I'm remotely concerned about is this moon right here. Because when I press down on it with my thumb, it actually gained a little bit. And that means somewhere on the inside it's not dry. And white paint is super slow on the dry. So that's the only thing that's remotely concerning. Whenever you're varnishing, you just need to pay attention to that. Is it dry and will it give? Because if it'll give, that means it's not completely dry on the inside. It can be dry and have like real thick texture on the outside, but if it gives a little bit, that means somewhere on the inside it's not dry and this stuff will soak through long term so just be very careful to pay attention to that that's a good question kim we'll leave that up there for other people to see
I'm kind of just glancing back and forth. You can actually use the um, the lights above you to kind of when you move side to side, use the glare on the light from the lights above you to see what's going on with that. And also, you can actually really tell the difference now between what has been varnished and what hasn't, because right over here it kind of looks almost a matte color. Right here, it looks like it's just been painted and it's very fresh. Hi, Linda. It's good to see you. Paintings normally take that long to dry. If it's an acrylic painting, that's a good question. If it's an acrylic painting, I'd have to say no. Acrylic paintings, you can wait two weeks or even a week sometimes, and it'll be completely dry on the inside. But um, Whenever you're talking about oil paintings, yes, they take a very long time to paint and um, well, actually not a very long time to paint, a very long time to dry and they're going to uh, be a little bit more mushy for a while. Usually about two weeks I've got it dry on the outside, maybe three. Just depends on how thick a texture you've got. If you're painting with real thin, it could be within a week. If you got real thick, it could take up to three weeks. I've got one painting that I did while I'm painting with Nick, Nick Sarah. Um, that one is still drying on the inside because it has so much pure white on it. And I painted it super thick, like probably like a quarter of an inch to a half an inch thick. Yep. Really good to see you too. All right. Let's get on the last little bits. Just gonna have to reload on that varnish. So I use, y'all can use whatever varnish y'all want. Just, just know that uh, retouch varnish, if you're trying to go for a show, that's gonna be like, like an exhibition and you want your varnish immediately in case you're selling it immediately and you've finished your painting. You're gonna wanna use retouch varnish for the sole fact that it dries super quick but it only lasts six months. The varnish I'm using lasts about a year, maybe longer. And then you can take it off with a certain other chemical and just a rag. And uh, retouch varnish though, since it's a lot shorter, it's, um, it's also a lot more potent chemically. So you're gonna wanna have to air your, like have nice ventilation in your, in your rooms and seal up your, um, your varnish when you're done. Otherwise, you're going to be inhaling a lot of nasty chemicals. We got ourselves a rogue hair somewhere. Look at that. You can just you can just tell the difference between the two sides. It's really nice. Now there are two different types of varnish as well. There's the glossy, and then there's the um, the matte. I I personally like the gloss because it brings out the color a little bit more. So after a year, does it need to be revarnished? Yes, that would be ideal. You would you would revarnish it after a year, most more than more times than not, unless you've got some type of varnish that I don't know of that could do it for 17, 20 years. Yes, about a year.
So this should be the last little bit. It usually takes about, I don't know, not very long, maybe 10 minutes. But this paint, this one is um, just a lot bigger than I'm used to. So it's taking a little bit longer time. Probably about 15 minutes, maybe 20. I'm kind of going back over this area right here because she's got a lot more thick texture and I don't want to miss anything. Matter of fact, I'm going to get a little bit closer. Here we go. All right, once, once you're all complete and you've covered the whole thing, just go back over the whole thing, just kind of go back and forth between, and just use the glare of the lights above you, and just kind of, here, I'm going to show y'all real quick. I'm going to get y'all up real close just to show y'all what a difference or what I'm talking about when you're getting up close. See this glare right here? I use that to kind of tell what's been varnished and what hasn't. But for the most part, I'm actually seeing everything's been varnished. You can tell if there's a little right here, actually. There's a spot right up here. I'm actually glad that I missed that, so now I can show y'all. There's a little hair. There we go. Another hair. And we are done. So I hope y'all learned a, a great deal because this is the first time I've, well actually the second time I've used this, but the first time on a big canvas. I use this one, I would use this one over a smaller one. Just because it's got more bristles and It'll be a lot easier on yourself and on your time. And it'll cover more ground faster. Well, hope y'all have enjoyed it. Um, have a good night. I'm going to be on probably about Thursday. Tuesday and Wednesday, I'm going to be busy. I've got church, and then I've got an appointment on Wednesday or Tuesday. So if y'all have any questions, just inbox me or shoot me a comment on the video. And I will check it later. Y'all have a good one.